Hello everyone, I know my channel has been a bit inactive recently, but that's because I'm working on a lot of long-term projects at the same time, on top of speedrunning every day. That being said, I wanted to release this video since I did promise it would come out in the near future. Today we're going over everything DIM has to offer, from creating loadouts to integrating with third-party services like D2 Armor Picker. I read every single comment on my community post and compiled everything you guys suggested, on top of investigating every menu and button in DIM myself. As it turns out, while there's not nearly as much as I originally anticipated, I still felt that this video needed to be pared down into sections. Specifically, we're going to be talking about weapons and armor, loadouts, searching, third-party tools, and finally, general advice. Let's start with that first one. When you first get a weapon or armor piece, a quick way to analyze it is to click it, then press A or click the weapon's name. This will bring up its summary page which contains its entire perk pool, its source, its introduction period, as well as a couple links to other sites like Light.gg and D2Foundry. If you're a fan of highlighting items based on parameters, look no further than tagging. There are a few ways to tag items, clicking on them and doing it manually item by item, from the new item feed, using a keyboard shortcut, or even using the search bar actions. Tagging items allows you to look for all tag matches at a glance, whether it be your PvP weapons you've marked with a heart, or some scrap pinnacle drops that you've tagged for infusion. Tagging can also interact with Destiny's locking system. By going into your settings, DIM can automatically lock items that have specific tags while unlocking those that do not. You can also see if an item is in one of your loadouts by using the triage tab, located right under the item's name. Not only does this tab tell you whether or not you actually use something, but it also tells you if there are similar items and allows you to filter for items in loadouts containing your currently selected item. The comparison pane is also incredibly useful for analyzing a variety of items that share similar properties. You want to compare all of your legendary arc rockets to see which ones to keep? Simply click a weapon and click compare or hit C, and now you can use the property filters at the top of the pane to change the grain of your search. Say you click on heritage. You can compare the heritage you click to other heritages, to other kinetic affinity shotguns, to other kinetic slot shotguns, to other kinetic slot slugs, to other legendary shotguns, or to other shotguns in general. If that's not specific enough for you, you can even use search filter parameters to compare whatever your heart desires. We'll go over filters later, but know that that's an option for now. Looking for a specific stat when you're farming? You can click these stats on the left of the compare pane to sort by value from left to right. This is good for weapons, but it's especially good for armor. Want an even more detailed look at whatever's in your compare pane? You can move everything to DIM's organizer tab, where you can sort or examine every single stat and property of whatever you want to compare. Speaking of the organizer tab, that's another great place to look at armor stats in individual columns at a glance. You can think of this tab as an extension of the inventory tab, it's just a more visually distinct view that's more suited to comparing individual options rather than looking at your whole vault. That means the search bar and all those filters we love so much also work here, and you can use the checkboxes along the left side of the window to perform actions like moving, tagging, and locking. Finally, you can also export anything in the organizer tab to a spreadsheet style .csv file if you want to go even further and manipulate all of the individual column data yourself. When it comes to loadouts, let's start from the beginning. First, the create loadout page has a few features I think you should know about. If you prefer making loadouts in-game like me, then the fill-in buttons are a godsend. If I have any weapons or armor that I frequently use that I want to convert into a loadout, this option allows me to instantly start a loadout with the right subclass, fragments, and other equipment that I need. It even includes mods and cosmetics, very useful for when you need to tweak one stat mod or maybe you forgot a surge. Loadouts can also be made global or class-specific. Why would you want a global loadout? Well, sometimes you want to have your armor sets and weapon sets separate in loadouts. For example, why have three PvP weapon loadouts when you can have one? The move other items away option is also absolutely essential. If you don't have this turned on, any weapons and armor you pull using your loadout will just pile on top of what you already have. This way you only have what you need and not what you had on before. Finally, take note of tagging and notes. If you ever share your loadout with someone, they'll be able to see your notes, and whenever you search for a loadout by clicking a class banner, the notes will be searched too. As for tagging, you can add selectable tags to your loadout notes by adding a hashtag before each tag. For example, some of my loadouts are tagged solar, and if I click my vault banner, I can select that tag to see all my loadouts matching that tag. It's like searching but a little faster using common terms for a bit of extra work beforehand. I'm sure you're also familiar with Destiny's in-game loadout system. What you might not know though is that DIM can actually modify your in-game loadouts better than the game itself can. 
By going to the loadouts tab and clicking on any of your in-game loadouts at the top, you can edit the icon, name, and color by just clicking whatever you want instead of painstakingly cycling through every single option in-game. If you've made an in-game loadout but you don't want to lose it after it's replaced, you can also save it as a dim loadout so that you can apply it later. Be warned though, as many speedrunners know, it takes centuries to apply these loadouts as they all require one API call per mod, ornament, shader, and item. Hopefully someday, Dim will be able to overwrite entire in-game loadouts at once, but until that day comes, this is what you'll have to settle for if you want to save more than 10 loadouts worth of information. Dim's search feature is one of its most powerful, but I see most people underutilize it. Much like how Dim searches loadouts, you can search for almost anything a weapon has, from its name, to its perks, to its affinity. You don't even need to type full words, if you're looking for supremacy for example, you can just type SUPR. However, the most potent capability of dim search comes from filtering. On screen now are what I believe to be the most useful filters in dim. That last one might stick out to some of you that don't recognize it. If you're not familiar, you can go into the settings cog in the top right of dim to create custom stat subgroupings that are specific to certain classes. For example, if I value resilience and discipline on warlock, I can make a subgroup called warlock and use the custom stat lower filter to find armor that has strictly lower total resilience and discipline compared to other armor in my vault. Let's talk about syntax next. Any filter that uses the is keyword can substitute it for the not modifier in order to achieve the opposite effect. You can also put a minus sign in front of any filter that doesn't use is to do the same thing. For example, if I want to find stuff that isn't masterworked in my vault, I can either do minus is masterwork or do not masterwork. In addition, dim supports boolean statements in its search logic, meaning you can use keywords like and, or, and not in conjunction with parentheses in order to create more complex searches. For example, if I want to highlight only 180 RPM hand cannons or 72 RPM snipers, I can do stat RPM 180 and is hand cannon or stat RPM 72 and is sniper rifle. Also useful, if you ever find yourself using a specific search query all the time, DIM supports saving search queries. All you have to do is wrap whatever you want to call the query in a single line comment. Those of you who code are probably familiar with this. For example, if I want to save a custom query that highlights only the weapons that my character has equipped and call it current, this is what I would type into search. After you've used the search once, all you have to do is type slash asterisk and then your previous custom queries will show up in the dropdown. As a final note, remember that you can manipulate whatever you have filtered using dim search in a variety of ways. By pressing the three dots on the right of the search bar, you can strip armor of all of its mods and cosmetics using strip sockets, you can lock or unlock all filtered items, you can tag a bunch of items, edit all items notes, compare, or even pull set items to your vault or any character. Before we move on to general advice, there are a host of third-party tools that interact with DIM or are generally useful for Destiny super users. Destiny Recipes has a useful vault cleaner which allows you to apply custom parameters and then compare every option you have in every weapon type. After you're done, it allows you to export a filter that highlights everything you need to dismantle in DIM, which you can then use to pull all of your newfound junk to your character. If you're a big fan of hyper-optimizing your armor stats, D2 Checklist takes the concept of class-specific stat distributions even further. By weighting each stat just to your liking, you can find the armor in your vault that best suits your stat needs based on a more precise score. Since the final shape raid is going to be a lot earlier than people expected, many raiders are bounty prepping in advance to unlock the artifact's fifth column early and get a head start on things. If you aren't familiar with bounty prepping, then Destiny Recipes has a useful tool that can track every important bounty that you should be hoarding. Speaking of bounties, you can purchase them from Orbit using the D2 Mobile Companion app if you want to avoid flying into every vendor. In a similar vein, a lot of people use engram.blue in order to check in on their pattern progress for any craftable weapons they're missing, and triumphs can be tracked through Bray.tech or DIM itself. Of course, if you are familiar with making Destiny builds, then you're probably aware that there's no better place to find the perfect armor for your perfect stats than D2 Armor Picker, which algorithmically sifts through all of your armor, accounting for masterworks, armor mods, fragments, artifice slots, and even the plus one resilience rekindled solstice ornament that some of you are hanging on to from a couple years ago. Finally, if you're a fan of sharing your dim adventures with others, there's a couple tools you can use to send and receive wishlists, vault snapshots, and loadouts. 
littlelight.club allows you to make wishlists using a GUI instead of listing out every weapon hash yourself, and DIM allows you to export your entire weapon and armor collection into a CSV file like we mentioned earlier, along with its famous loadout sharing capability. Last but not least, I wanted to compile a list of tips for general gameplay alongside DIM, which I couldn't really fit into the other sections. First, a lot of people ask me how I handle DIM loadouts versus in-game loadouts. Whenever I have an activity that I play frequently, be it PvP or King's Fall speedruns, I have a bulk loadout that transfers any weapons or armor I might need to use in that activity, and then my in-game loadouts reflect certain encounters or situations that use some, but not all of those weapons and armor pieces. For example, my King's Fall loadout transfers Forbearance, Retraced, and Empty Vessel to my Warlock in the energy slot. Forbearance is for Entrance, Retraced is for Totems, and the Vessel is for Warpriest damage, with each being a part of a different in-game encounter loadout. Another tip I've picked up from others is the usage of the Steam Browser Overlay on top of Destiny for PC players. While I personally have the Steam Overlay disabled, some people set their Steam Browser homepage to DIM so that they can access DIM without ever having to tab out to another monitor or out of the game. Farming mode is also something people should be aware of. If you've ever suffered the pain of losing a stack of spoils or maybe some loot that you farmed, try this feature out. By clicking on your character banner and selecting farming mode, DIM will automatically keep a certain number of slots on your character empty, and anything you pick up that attempts to occupy those slots will go to your vault. You can even change this number to however many slots you want in the DIM settings config. Speaking of keeping space, a lot of Destiny's most recent seasonal materials have been clogging up my inventory. Fortunately, DIM allows you to move certain resources like Phantasmal Fragments and Here Always pieces into your vault if you don't need them. This is very handy if your inventory is brimming with rally flags like mine, or filled with junk like the single dismantled 99 stack feeble offerings from Season of the Witch. As for tracking materials, you can also hover over this icon under your vault banner to see a summary of what currencies you have. Finally, my last two tips. First, a lot of people ask how I get my dim to look the way it does. Whenever you have some time, although I'm sure you visited the settings cog a couple times over the course of this video, check out Dim's sorting settings. You can change its theme, I use Pyramid Fleet, separate your weapons into rows by rarity, or sort your items using prioritized factors. Second, you can use keyboard shortcuts to make Dim a little faster, with my favorites being R to reload API data, L to lock or unlock an item you have selected, P to pull an item to your character, and V to vault an item you're looking at. And that about sums up my day of digging through Dim. Most of what I looked at is stuff that I was already vaguely aware of, but some of these features were completely new even to me. Since a lot of you are frequently asking me how I manage loadouts efficiently using DIM and other tools, hopefully this video uncovered part of how third-party tools can help endgame players in their day-to-day. -day. If you guys have any other tips related to DIM or third-party Destiny tools, feel free to leave them in the comments. As for what's coming next, I'm doing a lot of damage testing and finishing up with getting the weapons I need for my endgame build series, so stay tuned for that. Goodbye for now.